Happy Sunday, everyone. How you doing? Another video here that I wanted to do. Um, so yeah, this video is just kind of a little bit of a fun celebration video. Uh, I noticed on my list of videos on my channel, um, it shows there's 80 videos I've done. <laughs> wow, that's quite a bit now. I've <laughs> been having some fun with it, doing some videos now for over a year, and it's been... Uh, been a lot of fun. There's a couple in there that are counted as uh, part of the 80 that are little mini uh, short little <laughs> video clips, but whatever. It's close to 80, so I was thinking, man, that's pretty cool. So um, I wanted to uh, sort of have my own little self-celebration about that, about doing these videos and hitting that number. And uh, yeah, uh, the shirt I'm wearing is um, Throttle House is one of the first YouTube video channels I started watching, not music related, but car related. So, you know, that's cool. And I like it so much, I sent away for a couple of things from them, a t-shirt and this cool hoodie. So yeah, uh, as far as my my channel here, and I've been having a lot of fun with the videos. This one here that I was, I got thinking about how can I mark 80 videos or give or take 80 videos. And I thought, hmm, 1980. It's a long time ago, and uh, 1980, I was 14 years old <laughs> in 1980, and I pulled out eight records from that time, that year, that are in my collection that are kind of like, <laughs> certainly the core of my early record collecting uh, taste, and uh, no reissue, reissues in this group, that's for sure. These are original 1980 uh, records. Um, I'll show a couple of... Uh, a couple of others here that I I did get some records uh, a couple of years ago from my late Uncle John's collection that are from 1980. Saga, this Saga record is from 1980. Um, Bruce Springsteen, The River, that's from 1980. That was from John's collection. And Rush, Permanent Waves, 1980, also came to me from John's collection. All right, so let's talk about these <laughs> these records that are in that have been in my collection since the year 1980. Okay, just a young guy just started getting into, you know, I was already into music a bit by then, but uh, yeah, one of the the key ones is ACDC, Back in Black, 1980. You know, this was uh, Brian Johnson's first album with the band. Such a huge album. I wanted to show these records because they're very cool. These are like original pressing stuff from 1980. Uh, you know, I kept this stuff in pretty grand shape. Played the hell out of most of it, but uh, it's in grand shape. And you know, what's cool about them is there's no, no fancy thick reissue stuff, no 180 back then. It was, these are all straightforward uh, pressings from 1980. So ACDC Back in Black, that's certainly one that <laughs> came, that it was, uh, you know, I played a lot uh, on more simple turntables and stereo systems that, that occupy my time now, but still a lot of fun. Here's one. The first Iron Maiden record. So this is Paul Diano, the original Maiden singer. And uh, yeah, look at that baby. Still in immaculate shape because that's just the way it happens with me but uh, this is another cool record to show you know look at that black of course and you know these records are I've mentioned this before they're they're thinner than some of these 180 gram type records that you can get nowadays and uh, I think they're cool they sound really sharp they sound really good so ACDC Back in Black and the original first Iron Maiden record, 1980. Been with me since I was 14 years old. Here's one that uh, I smile a lot about because it was the last, the final studio record from one of my favorites from back then, Max Webster, Universal Juveniles. And, uh, you know, another cool record. This is on the Anthem label like all the old Rush stuff. And, uh, you know, what's very cool about that record is <laughs> I wanted to show, 
you know, my records have all been put in these uh, fancy MoFi sleeves, but back then, you know, we kept them in the uh, paper sleeves they came in. But the Max Webster record has that cool, you know, in inside cover with all of the caricatures that were, you know, and this is the record that has Battle Scar that features Max Webster and Rush together. So that's a cool record still in my collection from the year 1980. The next two are from back then. Uh, back then, my twin brother and I used to, you know, share some stuff. And I actually accumulated some stuff in my collection from trades and <laughs> that type of thing back then. And these two next ones, I think, were originally, well, they are, because up in the corner, my brother, you know, he had, he would write his, scratch his, uh, put his initials in the outside sleeve. So both these next two records have DA for Don Allen, and uh, that's Saxon, Strong Arm of the Law. Very, very cool early Saxon record from 1980. And, uh, you know... Look at, look at this record. Still in really good shape. The album itself, just fantastic. It's fun to have these. I mean, you can see the, uh, <laughs> all of the records that I'm showing you are early hard rock metal, I guess you'd call it. Uh, that was the core of what we listened to. So this also has my brother's name up in the corner. That's now in my, it's been in my collection a long time, so we must have traded for this back in the day. Motorhead, Ace of Spades, from 19, the year 1980. It's on the uh, London label. Look at that. Mercury. I guess I said London because it looks like London City, but it's Mercury. Motorhead, Ace of Spades. <laughs> All these still get played, by the way. I mean, they still get played by me, and uh, I have a blast with them all. I'm glad I kept them in my collection. So back to stuff that I had in my collection from probably purchases back in the day. I do remember, you know, I don't remember specifically, you know, at 14 years of age and all these years later, uh, where exactly I bought some of these. But uh, would have been in, I grew up in a bit of, time in Richmond Hill, a bit of time in Barrie, Ontario. So would have been in those uh, old Sam shops, perhaps, or uh, man, I wonder if Sunrise was back then, probably was. Uh, so this is eight, uh, Van Halen 2, 1980. And this was always my favorite Van Halen record. Fantastic. On the Warner Brothers label, still in great shape. Really cool. All the cool inserts, the covers that um, we got back then with the pictures and the photos of the bands and stuff. I still have. I kept all that stuff. And uh, I just put the, you know, the new norm nowadays is to put your vinyl, your records in these nice MoFi sleeves, which I agree, they look cool and they're, they do keep better. But back then we never did that stuff. But I kept all my cool in, inner sleeves and kept them in great shape. And I'm going to be, I, I use some of those for some cool artwork in my little space. So that's cool. Van Halen 2. Here's an oldie, man, that I had from back in those times. <laughs> Judas Priest, British Steel. What a cool record. From 19, the year 1980. Look at that. All these get played. They all get played on occasion here. And uh, it still remains the core of my <laughs> taste, I guess, is that early, I, I mean, we called it metal back then, but really it's, you know, it's hard rock metal, early metal stuff. So this is an appropriate one. And this, um, when I was doing a little bit of my research for doing this little video for, for you guys, and for myself to celebrate this this number of videos I've done. Um, obviously, this record jumps out at me, but when I was doing some research, it came out in, in uh, England, Britain in 1980, but it actually came out in North America in 81. But it's been in my collection since those times. The first Aussie record, Blizzard of Oz. It's 
still gets played. Jet Records still gets played. You know, <laughs> kind of appropriate to show this one, given that this past, uh, this weekend that we're in right now, the Ozman gets into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as an individual artist because of this, really, and Randy Rhodes, and uh, this jump-started his career again, and uh, yeah, cool record to have from back then. As I say, all this stuff is, all these records say right on them, 1980, and uh, none of these are <laughs> reissues, that's for sure. They're they're uh, constant issues <laughs> in my collection. <laughs> uh, so a bit of a shorter video tonight. I just wanted to uh, celebrate my little milestone of 80 videos, or give or take 80 videos. And uh, I'll have to do one for the 100 one coming up, I guess, <laughs> in a while. But um, the next video I do, I think... Uh, uh, I bought some fresh records recently, and I'm going to be doing that again uh, this coming weekend, next weekend. I've got big record store, or not record store, but record buying at record stores um, plans with my son in the big city, visiting some cool shops. And I wanted to, uh, I'll be showing off some fresh artwork that I just got to finally, you know, uh, put, put in some frames, um, simple frames this time. And I'll show that. So that'll be my next video. It'll be kind of like a show, a show and tell, a show off stuff. So yeah, 1980, long time ago. Great music that came into my collection in my life back then. And uh, stuff that sort of, you know, the foundation of what I always loved. And that's guitar-oriented hard rock, I suppose. And uh, great stuff. A lot of fun. Okay, let's see here. Ozzy. Um, saw him. Saw Ozzy at uh, Maple Leaf Gardens back then. With Randy Rhodes, I believe. It's a long time ago. I can barely remember it. Um, seen Judas Priest a couple of times. And, uh, yeah. Van Halen. I saw back at Maple Leaf Gardens when they were in their heyday, and then I saw them again when they came back. Never saw Motorhead. Never saw Motorhead. Um, that's not a band I saw. Saxon I saw um, late in their career. Uh, really not all that long ago uh, when I saw Judas Priest here in my local space, and Saxon was opening that show, and I was... Very excited to finally see Saxon because I've always been a big Saxon fan. Never saw um, Max Webster live, but I have seen Kim Mitchell back when he embarked in his solo career way back when. And then um, Karen and I saw Kim Mitchell uh, locally, which was cool. Maiden. I have seen Maiden <laughs> uh, a couple of times back in the day, like a long time ago. And then a really huge show um, in, you know, recent times. So, uh, you know, happy to say that. And ACDC. I've seen ACDC twice um, in their heyday. And uh, if it wasn't this tour, it was the next one. But it might have been this tour at Maple Leaf Gardens with Angus hanging off the bell. <laughs> that was cool. And uh, then I saw them uh, at a big, big show in Toronto at Downsview Park. So there you go. Kind of like the core bands of my uh, music life. So there's my video. Have, uh, have a nice evening. And uh, like and subscribe if you watch my videos and you haven't done so. That's cool. And uh, yeah, I hope that you'll check in with me again. Again, the next one will probably be uh, showing off a bunch of fresh stuff in my... In my uh, music life and collection. Okay guys, take care. All the best. See you later.